Thank you. Thank you very much. One more round of applause for her, please. At this point, to speak on behalf of the immediate family of uh, the late General Gola, allow me to invite Lona Achieng Ogola, who will speak on behalf of uh, the immediate family. And as she's coming, let me also recognize Dr. Doto Mashaka Biteko, Deputy Prime Minister, Tanzania, representing Her Excellency, the President, Samia Suluhu. Welcome, ma'am. Friends, I would like to start by inviting one of my dad's friends, Charlene Ruto, Her Excellency. We had a very strong bond over many things, and she asked me to share this spot with her. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to stand on the protocol that has already been observed in the interest of time. Our condolences to the family of General Logola, Mama Irene, my sisters Acheng and Mudoni, and brother Joel and all the relatives. Not just from me and my siblings, but from the young people of Kenya. Kenya has lost a chief of defense forces, but as young people, we are deeply saddened because we have lost our mentor and our champion. Without a doubt, a very high percentage of our defense forces is made up of young people, but General Ogola's influence went beyond our young people in the defense forces to those in various leadership positions and fields, such as the climate space, sports, health practitioners, and many more. Some messages I have received from the young people I met him last year, and he spoke so highly of the Africa Youth Climate Assembly and even inquired on how we could mainstream the culture of environmentalism and climate action in the forces. We might still need to do this in his honor. Another one. I am still in disbelief. I read his last text to me a time like now last month, and I just broke down. He truly was our champion. May he rest in peace. Personally, I met General Logola only once, but once was enough for me to experience his kindness, his genuine care, and love for the young people, and his determination to support us to succeed. His death has hit my team members and I so hard, because in the fight for youth inclusion, many listen to us, but few encourage, support, advise, guide. General Logola was among the few. I really don't know if we'll ever find another one like him, but as young people, in his honor, we aim to live a life like his, of good character, humility, and integrity. May the soul of our mentor and our champion rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charlene. Our message will be a two-part message. I will deliver the message to the country and my brother will come on up and deliver the message for the people of Siaya County and its borders. Ladies and gentlemen, it is such a privilege to stand before you today. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, God is good. God is good all the time and his plans for us are always good. His plans are especially good for those that love him. And my father loved him, and my mother loved him, and I loved him. So even though I cannot make sense of the events that happened this week, I give God praise. And his praise will not leave my lips because he is God. He has seen beyond today, he has seen beyond the next hundred years, and he saw that this was good, so I give thanks. So let us not entirely lose ourselves in the morning. Let us celebrate a life well lived together. Bless the Lord with me. I want to talk about one thing, um, and one thing only. I had many, but I'll focus on one thing, his pursuit of excellence. I posted about my father for the first time ever. Immediately, Joel confirmed that he was actually dead. He did not like social media. He did not like being in the limelight. He 
appreciator just doing his work in the silence not having people talk about it so not many people knew he was my father and not many people knew we were related but i was deeply 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 inspired by his work i'll pause for a second as our brothers take their respects thank you friends god bless you so i'll talk about his pursuit of excellence in the aftermath of my post, I, was, I thought I was only posting it to my global team so that people know where I am and why I'm missing for a month or more. And it blew up, and I didn't expect that. But I promised I'd tell stories of his pursuit of excellence, and I'll tell two memorables what, right, right here, right now. A couple of people were digging around and asking, how is it that his daughter did all these things? She got her engineering degree from MIT and from Stanford and a business degree from Cambridge. Like what kind of parent creates and upbrings children like this? And I'm here to share with you the kind of man that raises children like me. And I wish I could talk about Joy, but he likes his privacy even more. He's amazing and smart as well. Now, Parents, if you're wondering, how do I get my child to change not just Kenya, but the world? Live it. Our children learn by how we show up in this world. And people here have stolen my speech because I was going to talk about how he gave 110% to everything. He never needed to tell Joey or I, work hard, read hard, because we saw him. We saw him do it. Even before I was born, he was reading the Bible cover to cover every year. And on hard years, like 2022, 2022 was a hard year in our family, he read the Bible cover to cover twice. And there's a competition, and I'm the slowpoke on my family, but because we saw him live it, we were inspired to be it. That's the easiest way to teach your children to change the world. It's not telling them. It is doing. And because he never used to talk about his reading of the Bible, he actually just used to show it. Now, when we talk about his work and his pursuit of excellence, he worked as if he was working for God. He had an audience of one. Anything he was doing, he was working for God and God alone. And we saw it. Let me tell you, this man, when I was already in college and Joey was about to go into college, he went back to university in Nairobi with my peers. I'm not sure about you, but I wouldn't be that humble. I'm not sure I could make it with Gen Z in class. And he was in class with my classmates. Now, let me set the stage for you. He's in the parallel program. He's based in Lake Kipia Air Base. He's commuting between Nanyuki and Nairobi for classes, for exams. And those of you who've been to University of Nairobi know it's not an easy path. And... Operation Linda Inchi was fully in session, and he had a lot of responsibilities in Laikipia Air Base across the borders, and this man excelled. He got a first class honors with my generation. He was in class with my peers. How could I not but be this? I'll tell you another short story. In 2005, he was posted to France. My father does not speak French, or he did not at that point. He had six months to learn a new language from scratch because failure was never an option in his mind. Do you know the man learned French? And he had to pass to a certain level for them to, be, uh, to accept him. It was Napoleon Bonaparte School, the best military school in France. The man did not know French, but he didn't tell his bosses, I can't do it. He jumped right into it, full energy, and he learned French. Now, let me give you a complication. During this period, he swallowed a fishbone. It got lodged in his intestines, and he was hospitalized for close to two months. He was my size. When I got out of third form and I went to see him in Armed Forces Memorial, he was my size, and I was broken. And here he was, sneaking out of Forces Memorial with my mom to go to Allianz Francaise to take his French exams so that he doesn't disappoint the government of Kenya even as a junior officer. He made it. He passed that level that was needed. He did his postgraduate diploma, and he made excellent leaders and friends from around the world, which is why he's getting so many messages. He met a lot of them in that school, and they were reaching out to us, and they've been so supportive. Actually, before I forget, 
Kenya Defense Forces, you all have been my family since my birth, and I'm so grateful for the love, support, care you've shown for me, Joey, mom, and the rest of the family in this period. I'm so grateful. My heart is filled with so much thanks for you. Public servants, distinguished guests, you all have been so caring. We so appreciate you. So if you leave with only one thing from what I have said today, please pursue excellence. Pursue excellence and work as if no one else is watching you but God, because then your reward is in heaven. He didn't need the title to lead. That's why he rejuvenated the military Christian fellowship with Muhashimi Wadraf Kingani over there. That's why he found himself leading Habitat for Humanity Kenya, even when there's not, he was always giving his good ideas. He had so many ideas for the country. That's why he was busy planting millions of trees with the forces under his fierce influence. He's planted so many trees for Kenyans. He had such a big heart for this nation. In closing, I'll tell you of his love for Kenya and his loves that you haven't heard of before. He had a big love for his family. He took me to school. Every day he was in the country for all of my elementary school. He loved his family. Fathers, show up for your family because your presence makes a difference. Even now at my big age, he would still show up for me at the airport. He would show up and take me shopping. He would show up and go bowling with my, my son and my brother. He would show up and just be very present and loving. He would tell mom, his wife of 40 years, I love you and I'm so grateful that I get to come home to you after this hard day, you make it bearable. He loved us so dearly, so please love your families and give your all. If all of us can just take a bit of this and give our all to the country, our country will be fast walled in no time. And I look forward to carrying on that legacy with my brother, who will give his love letter to the people of Siaya, Alego, Kisumu, and the people of this land. Joey, please come up. Thank you all. Excellency President, Excellency First Lady, Excellency Deputy President, I have been caught unawares the last three days. I need to say something. But yesterday I talked about the military and family man. Today I want to talk about the son of Alego. You know, Your Excellency, even up to yesterday, People were still speculating, oh, president appointed him because of this, oh, president appointed I want to clear the air with the conversations I had with my father about his time with the president. Uh, he didn't really divulge any national security issues, but generally I feel it's important to first of all clear the air. The president didn't have to appoint him first of all, and initially, he saw his competencies and decided that this is the man for the job. But very quickly, they started becoming friends and they formed a serious chemistry, which he would tell me, I have had a very good meeting with the boss. You know, tell me what it is. And it's not the president alone. The deputy president as well really enjoyed his company. They formed a serious working security relationship of securing the country and his cabinet secretary. These people became like brothers. I've seen, oh, someone on Twitter saying, oh, it was this rose, oh, the president was in a corner. And I actually feel bad for the three of them because I know it went beyond the working relationship and they were working to change this country very seriously. And it's a serious blow to the three of them. That one I'm saying, I talk to him personally. None of you... None of you know that information, but I know he had a very, very good working relationship with His Excellency. Na ata niliona Excellency Jano Meshika macho kidogo, watu wakasema hii ni machozi ya crocodile, these are fake. In my heart, from what I know, I know it was genuine. I know it was genuine. Now, when it comes to this area, the president mentioned, actually the deputy president mentioned yesterday,
they came for a working tour and decided to come to our home for lunch and we relaxed for the whole evening. He spent four or five hours with us and there were many discussions. One of the discussions I had with both Excellency Deputy President and the President was a project which I pitched to both of them and they really encouraged me. Now, this project, Your Excellency, I didn't tell you the main purpose of it and the end goal. The end goal was to change the lives of the people of Nyanza. We, I had an elaborate plan that in the next two, three years, all these primary schools you're seeing here to be fully rehabilitated. We had plans to build many more churches. We had plans for everyone to clean water, to have clean water. You don't have to be a politician to make a difference to your country. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't. Sometimes the politicians make so much noise, but the results, we can't see them. And Kelele ni mingi, lakini kazi sa zingine ni kidogo. And that one I'm not afraid of saying. Your Excellency, this mandate was given to me by God himself more than 14 years ago. I took my dad and I made him take me to all the graves of all the great Luo leaders around. We went to Jaramogi's home, we went to Achengoneko's home, we went to Robert Oko's home, I was privileged to meet the wife. And Your Excellency, God put something in my heart to change the lives of the people in this region. I'm making a public announcement today. And it is nothing political, I'm not interested in politics because I have a plan, both Excellencies are aware of it. All I am asking for is their continued support. And Nita Waita Mufungwe Mashule na Makanisa Yeri Mpaka Museme Yoi Metosha. Ata Sasa Toka Yeri Ukuje Saidietu. That one, Your Excellency, I commit to you before God, the public, and the President. I will change this area. In fact, my first school that I wanted to start working on was is Pap Nyadiel, just down the road. But my father, having been brought here, this will be my first place. And, Your Excellency, so knowing your working relationship with him, let me just put this to rest. As a family and as a community, we thank you for putting your trust in general. Uh, you are not lucky to come by road. You came, I think, by helicopter. But on the road, people from all the counties on the way here, Kisumu, all the markets along the road, they are bidding farewell to the general. They didn't even know him, some of them, but they've lost a son of the land. And he was a great man. And the only way I can continue his legacy is by what I've said. Because if we're in, I think it's Equatorial Guinea, where when a general dies, I would just walk to the coffin, take his ranks and medals, and I start giving orders to the generals there. Sasa wewe kamata ile pale, kamata ile pale. But because we live in a democracy, unfortunately, I may not be able to wear his ranks. <laughs> so, Your Excellency, once again, thank you very much. Now, what watch a kusema is omane nozao at yo, he did this, this. These guys were friends in state house. Nyinyi amjei kuenda uko. Mimi mzendo alikuwa na niambia na penda president sana. They were good friends. So, your maneno from today, unless you're quoting me, Mwachane Nayo. Na kwanza, your bloggers are always posting those things. Let me just say, Your Excellency, when my mom called me and told me your dad has gone down in a helicopter crash, they are very useless bloggers. You're so quick to post pictures. I've been told by my mother my father has gone down. Ten minutes later, I'm seeing a helicopter burning. What does that mean? Of course, he's dead. And people are so insensitive. So you broke the news. Umepewa EGH for breaking the news that the general is dead. Let us be sensitive, Tafadali, bloggers, what your media. Mombiwa bloggers watch em chess, I'd mentioned them by name. Lakini yo yo tabia pana. And I really want to appreciate I won't mention the person who finally told me Mze has rested and really encouraged me in that moment and told me now is the time to be strong. Kwa hayo mengi na machache, 
mabibi na mabwana asante ni sana that was the siaya tribute yesterday was a military one on friday during his memorial we have very many stories about general which would have everyone laughing for very many minutes so hopefully you can join us then as well asante ni sana Thank you very much, Joel. Your Excellency, the son of a general, speaks like a general. Let's give him one more round of applause as he takes his seat. And we now move from the family, and we want to have a church representative. And on behalf of the church, let me call Mr. Philip Opio, who is going to speak on behalf of the church. Mr. Philip Opio, kindly, if you may advance so that you may give the remarks on behalf of the church. After that, we'll move then to the military. Tumpigia makofi ya kija. Karibu sana. The Excellency, President Dr. William Samoy Ruto, the mourners present, I want to greet you in the name of the Lord. I'm a member of the church, St. Thomas Church. We used to be in the church with the general, and he impressed us so much. On 31st, he was there, 31st last month. We were with him. He took the Holy Communion. It was an ordinary church. All of us were there. And my purpose to come here is to give his contribution to the church. But his contribution is anchored on the following. The late was a contributor based on Matthew 6, verses 2 to 4. And I want to repeat. Matthew 6, verses 2 to 4. And I quote verse 3. But when you do charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That was the general. He did a lot of in our village, in our church, but he never wanted it to be mentioned. Now that I'm here, I will apologetically say the following that the general did. With apology, please. His contribution in the church started way back in 1980 when he was a youth. The general, the, general, the general, Christmas and Easter envelope, in Anglican we have envelopes, always reached the church of St. Thomas. In 1990s, he intensified his contribution towards the church development. The climax came with the construction of the new church, which was created this, mor this morning. The church began, the building of the church began on 16th September 2016. He contributed 90% toward the construction of that church. And 100% contribution towards the furniture in that church. We members of St. Thomas Nduru, we are deeply saddened but grateful for him. He later drilled water in the church compound and mounted two tanks of 10,000 liters each. We supply water to the church, Nduru Mixed Secondary School, Nduru Primary School, and the dispensary. On Sunday, 31st March 2024, he was in the church and not only contributed generously, but also sent 
100,000 to St. Andrew's Church, ACK, which is our neighbor, during their fundraising. There's one thing that we also acknowledge, that he contributed. His prayer in the church attracted so many youth. The population started, of the church started going up. And I believe by end of this year, we were going to raise a lot of money in terms of Christmas contribution because of his presence in the church. In the learning institution, the late renovated all the classrooms and offices of Nduru Primary School, where the, the family learned. He supplied over 100 desks on his own. He bought playing balls, uniforms for schools, team, and supplied goalposts for netball, volleyball, and football. To the community, he provided financial support for the disadvantaged families and supported widows and orphans. All in all, he was a generous contributor in the society. May God bless his soul. May God bless the family. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Next, we'd like to have the vice CDF. Lieutenant General Charles Kahariri, who will come and represent the military. We can put our hands together as we welcome him. Welcome, sir. Excellency the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces, Honorable Dr. William Samoy Ruto and Mama Rachel Ruto, uh, Deputy President, Your Excellency, all protocols observed because of time. Uh, sir, the military uh, gave us the opportunity yesterday uh, to give an honor ceremony to our fallen general. So today we will not say much. Uh, I'm standing here, sir, first with your permission, with the Air Force Commander, because we need to recognize that general was first and foremost an Air Force officer, an S pilot, the best fighter pilot Kenya has ever produced. I would like uh, to let General Omenda just say something in line with his career as a service commander. Uh, just for a minute, sir. General Ogola was a fine airman. Above all, he was a leader he was a commander, and he was a mentor to all of us in the Kenya Defense Forces. On behalf of all airmen, women, and the entire Kenya Defense Forces, I want to condole with the family and the entire nation. May the Almighty God rest his soul in eternal peace. Amen. Uh, Mama Eileen Ogola, uh, the family, uh, we've had what Joy has said and her sister. Madam, be assured that you are a KDF family. And we not only will do it because you are, but if we don't, His Excellency has already given those instructions that we must take care of you. We, he didn't have to because we are part of us, but we will definitely ensure that you are well taken care of. We wish 
to, to today, Your Excellency, just convey condolences of the KDF to the wider family uh, of the late general, now that we are in his home area. Please accept our heartfelt condolences, as well as the people of Siaya and the general region of Nyanza, uh, because this was your girl and son that uh, you will be dearly missed. So kindly accept our condolences. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, as uh, has been mentioned, the General uh, had friends uh, far and wide. Today, Your Excellency, uh, we have with us uh, the CDF of the United Republic of Tanzania, uh, General Jacob John uh, Msunda. Uh, could you please? Uh, your Excellency, the CDF of Malawi, General Paul Valentino Firi. Uh, the CDF of Burundi, General Prime Nyongambo. Your Excellency, the CDF of Namibia uh, was on his way. However, due to uh, some uh, some challenges in Joburg, he, uh, the flight had to be cancelled, so he, he returned back to Namibia. However, uh, he was able, then, uh, he had been preceded by a delegation led by, led by Brigadier uh, Nangolo. And two participants. We also saw, have uh, from Rwanda, uh, Major General uh, Vincent Nyakanundi, the Army Chief of Staff. And uh, from Uganda, sir, uh, a delegation led by Lieutenant General Charles Okidi, the Air Force Commander. <laughs> sir, the messages still keep coming, and we should make sure to share with the family uh, because of uh, the General's uh, networks. Allow me at this point to just say again, uh, as a military, uh, the loss that we have felt, and once again assure His Excellency that as the General would have wanted, uh, we continue to soldier on and ensure the security of this country. So nothing has really changed as far as our duties are concerned. Fair the our General. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you, Excellency. We now want to move to the part of uh, tributes from the executive. And at this point, allow me to invite the Cabinet Secretary for Defense, Honorable Adam Dwale, to come and give his tributes and also handle the part of the executive. Welcome, sir. Your Excellency and the Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces, Your Excellency the First Lady, Your Excellency the Deputy President, leaders present, mourners, Your Excellency my brother and friend and our general told us how his ceremony should be conducted and how he should be buried and Mama Eileen and the children have confirmed that to us and in a very short ceremony let me take this opportunity to invite the governor of Siaya County Governor James Orengo to make remarks and then we take the program from there. Uh, 
Asante. To to Eileen Ogola and the family. To the President of the Republic of Kenya, the First Lady, the Deputy President, the Azimio leadership led here by Kalonzo Musioka and Martha Karua, the Speaker of the National Assembly. I, before I say anything, and I think it is important that uh, we say this, something on this solemn occasion. Allow me, because I saw Dr. Buru Oginga step in, allow me to invite Dr. Buru to come and say something. Dr. Buru. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, and His Excellency, the Deputy President, and the First Lady, and the family of the late General Logola, and all protocols observed, I stand here on behalf of my family the family of the late Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, uh, on whom I represent as the chair. <laughs> <laughs> now, the late Ogola here was, uh, is our maternal uncle, and our mother comes from this village. And uh, therefore, we come here as relatives of Ogola. I also come here to bring condolences of my brother, Yakom Raila Amolo Odinga, who has sent me to come because he is a bit indisposed. He could not come personally, but he has asked me to come and represent him and the family. So I also want to uh, bring condolences of Uhuru Kenyatta, the former president of Kenya, His Excellency, who has also brought his con condolences to the family. He is out of the country, but he has uh, asked me to bring his condolences to the family. Now, I would only want to mention one word after saying words of condolences and sympathies to the family, I would just like to say that the, the death was an accident, but even though it is an accident, in this region we have had many such accidents, and we have also had assassination of leaders from this region. So when such things happen, we are a bit suspicious, not because of anything, but we want to know the truth. We want to know the truth. And uh, I want to ask our uncle, the general's son, not to be impatient with us. It is not because of anything. It is just because once beaten, twice shy. So we are asking for no stones to be left and turned and let us know the truth of who killed our uncle General Ogola. He was a, he died too soon and we are a bit uh, shaken by his death and uh, you know, you people know we lost Tom Boyer in very tragic circumstances. We lost Ouko in very tragic circumstances 
And when we lost Ouko, I was part and parcel of the team of parliament which was investigating the death of Ouko. And I can tell you it was very sad because the regime at that time managed to convince the family to be very protective and not to allow people to go into detail. So young man, please do, just allow investigators to do their work. <laughs> now, with those very, very few remarks, I would once again want to wish that our uncle is uh, rested in peace in heaven and let the Almighty put him in the best place and was one of our best sons, one of the best sons from this area. We wish that the Almighty puts his soul in peace and let his family also rest here and we shall be with you all the time. Thank you very much. Mahali Pema Pepon. Thank you, Governor of CIA. Your Excellency, on behalf of the Ministry of Defense and Kenya Defense Forces, and as a person who worked very closely with General Ogola as a Vice Chief of Defense Forces and as the Chief of Defense Forces, personally, I have lost a brother. I have lost a colleague. I have lost a member of the Defense Council. I have lost a general who has put the security, the sovereignty, and territorial integrity of our country. His family will confess, Your Excellency, that even Christmas and New Year, General Gola could sacrifice and tell me troops in deep operations, those outside the country, we were in Kismayu, we were in deep hostile areas. He was a man who was committed to his work. He was a man because the office of the minister and the vice chief of defense forces are the closest officers, Your Excellency. I work with all the vice chief of defense forces and the chief of defense forces. He was a man of discipline and honor. I don't want to say more because you have interacted with, me, with him too. So, Your Excellency, the rank and the leadership of Kenya Defense Forces, we have a lot to learn from General Ogola, our general. The way we will learn and have learned more, Chief of Defense Forces, we want to assure you that we will leave the legacy and the dreams of General Ogola for the safety of our nation, be it in the air, land, and the sea. But Your Excellency, as our Commander-in-Chief, if you allow me, the former Prime Minister yesterday said a statement. And I want to qualify that statement. Because General Gola was very close to me, particularly when he was the Vice Chief of Defense Forces. And when the whole issue of bombers, 15th of August, was hanging over his head. He, ha he even told me, and the family can agree with me, we had conducive st uh, discussion, that even he has lost weight that this thing was disturbing him. And Your Excellency, General Ogola was not, as the Vice Chief of Defense Forces, was not a member of the National Security Committee, which is chaired by the Head of Public Service. So how did the General Ogola went to ANSAC and to BOMAS and as a Muslim, General Ogola shared with me text messages of his superiors 
and members of the National Security Committee then. And he asked three, four times. First, in the morning when he was going to NSAC, he showed me the message that he was given, go represent me at NSAC because of a prior other commitment of the person who was supposed to go. When he went to NSAC, General Ogola and a direction was given to him with other colleagues, with a leader, him as a member, to go to Bomas. General Ogola, as a respectable soldier and general, he asked and sent a text message to his bosses and asked, what am I going to do in Bomas? And this has happened. And General Ogola was told, it's been decided, you go. And I'm narrating what General Ogola today, he's lying here, this man, told me. When he went to Bomas, the then chairman of IBC, he told me, kept them for five hours. And the 411 came while he was in Bomas, saying the results will be announced at three. And General Ogola then again sent a text message and saying now that the result will be announced at three as a general, as a soldier, what am I doing here? And he was told, stay with your colleague. That text message is there. When His Excellency, when His Excellency yesterday said, I had a one-to-one -one with the General Ogola, he gave me permission to have one-on-one -on -one discussion with the General Ogola on a Monday from 7 to 9.30 p.m. in my house. His security, his drivers can confirm. And when he convinced me, because he was a man of God, when he convinced me is when he got an opportunity to relay and talk to the president with those three statements at the end of his discussion with the president. Today, I want to confirm that because of what happened in, to General Ogola, the president as the chairman of the National Security Council, so that, it will, so that for it not to happen again, the president has directed last year that members of the National Security Committee, the IG, the DG NIS, the head of public service, PS Interior, PS Defense, CDF, PS Foreign Affairs, PS Treasury, and the Solicitor General can never again delegate the attendance of that membership to their juniors. Because tomorrow, another member of the National Security Committee will commit the same crime. So Honorable Raila Odinga was very right, very right. And I came today to qualify his statement that General Ogola, a man he knows, will not have gone to Bomas. And the people who sent him to Bomas, some of them are here. Some of the people who sent him to Bomas, some of the people who sent him to Bomas are known. They are members. So sometimes, the way Joel said, let us not create a false narrative about General Ogola. Your Excellency, allow me again to make another confession as your Minister for Defense. Many of my colleagues ask me, you used to be a vibrant politician, you have changed. I have changed because I went to a different environment. Your Excellency, when General Tonje introduced that gentleman's agreement, there was General Opande, 
who he recommended to be the next CDF. But he did not. He was not given that chance. Many, many, the law says that a CDF will serve for four years or at the attainment of 62 years, whichever comes first. Your Excellency, this region, this region has produced decorated generals. General Owiti, General Opande, and many, many others. But because you wanted to change Kenya, you said we must kill ethnicity and regionalism in our country, Your Excellency, and I want to confirm to the nation. There were many people within even our ranks who said General Ogola should not be appointed. But they had only one reason. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate, the reason of 15th of August. They forgot all the other credentials of General Ogola. Your, Your Excellency, you have confirmed to the nation you are not a petty leader. You are not a vengeful leader. You are not a person who will follow what happened, Your Excellency. As your Minister for Defense, you made a deliberate, with the finality, based on the credentials. He was a smart general. He was one of our finest jet F-15 jet fighter. He has trained everybody here, including the current Air Force commander. He was a man of humility. He could walk to my office and to all the offices. I could walk to his office. Your Excellency, one day he came to me and asked me in the holy month of Ramadan, Minister, can I fast with you for seven days? Your Excellency, you decided, you directed, and I went and passed the council, the defense council, your decision on the 27th of April, 2023, the appointment of General Ogola, among others. And on 28th, you saw him as your next CDF. He died, you saw him on 28th of April, 2023, he died on the 18th of April, 2024, 10 days before he made to one year. He had good plans, Your Excellency, for the 15th of May this year of our graduation. And he told you the reforms he will introduce, and you will see it, because our team is here. Your Excellency, you'll go into the annals of history as a person who appointed not only General Ogola, not only Raimon Omolo, not only many, many Kenyans to key security positions, including myself, without regard to ethnicity, to the region they come from, and to how their communities voted in last election. Your Excellency, you will be the one that will make sure that Kenya will be a country that everybody and every community will be proud of. With those many remarks, Your Excellency, let me take this opportunity Your Excellency, Managing coalitions, as you know, it's never easy. I need to tell you that I spoke on behalf of Mwangi Wairia, the party leaders of Usawa, and Mwishmua Wajakoya of Roots Party. Thank you. I forgot to mention the governor as well. I will. I will. I will.
governors who are present here, I saw Governor Otoma, you are being recognized, we recognize you, we value you, all our senators and other leaders. Your Excellency, with those very many remarks, we, the KDF family and fraternity, have lost a great general. We have defended, who defended our country. We will not let you down as our commander-in-chief. It's my humble duty to invite the Speaker of the National Assembly, the Honorable Moses Masika Wetangula. Your Excellency, our President and Commander-in-Chief of our Forces, our First Lady, Deputy President, the family of our fallen brother and hero, fellow mourners, Oyareuru, I stand here to bring a message of condolences from my family and from the Parliament Fraternity. We have lost a great man, General Gola, was one of our finest for those of us who knew him. Brilliant and assuming and a wonderful communicator. I had an opportunity to work with General Gola and his colleagues during my time in foreign affairs over the peace issues in the Horn of Africa. He had clarity of mind as to what we needed to do to secure our, our region. Today, we see of a man who lived by the law, who lived by the Bible, and who lived for this country. Mine is just to wish Mama Irene and your children and the larger family the protection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for you to believe in prayer for the Bible says, Bwana aliye ju, diye bwana wajane, ne baba ya mayatima. Lastly, as a country, we learn a lesson from this great man and your excellencies act to appoint General Gola. That this country needs all of us and all of us have a role to play, and that parochial politics and helpful fitina will not guide us to modernize this country. We will work together as one. And General Gola, wherever you are, my brother, rest in eternal peace. We owe you more than you owe us as a country and we pray for your soul. Thank you. Your Excellency, allow me uh, to introduce cabinet ministers present. Can you please stand? And principal secretaries present. And uh, Your Excellency, thank you. And then, Your Excellency, we also have the head of all our other security agencies. It's now my humble, please. It's now my humble duty and pleasure to invite the Prime Cabinet Secretary, Honorable Musali Amudavadi, to take over the program from here. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, 
Mheshimiwa William Samoy Ruto, our first lady Madam Rachel Ruto, the deputy president Rigathi Gashagwa, Aileen Ogola and your entire family, the leadership of the defense forces, friends, relatives and all dignitaries present. Your Excellency, a lot has been said, so I will really be very brief, but with your permission, uh, let me give the Deputy Prime Minister of Tanzania, who has been sent to represent uh, Madam Suluhu, to convey a word of condolence. He's called Ndoto Mashaka Biteko. Thank you. Mwishmua, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, Raisi wa Jamhuri ya Kenya na Mama Ruto, Mwishmua viongozi wote, tukiongozwa na makamu wa Raisi, Nguzangu wa umborezaji wote, wana yesu asifiwe. Mwishmua Raisi, nimesimama hapa kwa niaba ya Dr. Samia Suru Hassan, Raisi wa Jamhuri ya Mungano wa Tanzania mbaye baada ya kupata taarifa ya kuondokewa na mkuu wa majeshi hapa nchini yeye pamoja na watanzania wote wanaungana na wewe kukupa pole nyingi kwa msiba mkubwa ulioupata wewe pamoja na familia ya marehemu na wakenya wote na vyombo vya ulinzi na usalama vya Kenya kwa kuwa umeondokewa na kiongozi mashuhuri kiongozi ambaye bila shaka kwa maneno yaliyosemwa hapa ameandika kurasa nyingi sana zitakazosomwa na vizazi vinavyokuja. Mheshimiwa Rais, Mheshimiwa Dr. Samia Suluh Hassan anakutakia moyo wa subira wakati huu mgumu wewe pamoja na familia lakini muhimu sana kwa wakenya wote na wale wote aliowaongoza. Mheshimiwa Rais nimesimama hapa kueleza tu kwamba yote yaliyosemwa kuhusu marehemu ni masomo makubwa kwetu sote lakini masomo makubwa kwa vijana wanaokuja tunamwombea mapumziko mema yeye lakini kwa familia kuyaishi yale mema yote ambayo marehemu alikuwa akiamini na kuyaishi asanteni kwa kunisikiliza asante sana uh, naibu waziri mkuu uh, ningependa tu nitaje majina ya wale mawaziri kwa sababu walisimama na ni vizuri watu wajue kwamba Uh, tuko hapa na mheshimiwa Machogu waziri wa elimu tafadhali funga mkono tuko na mheshimiwa Eliud Walo asante sana tuko na mheshimiwa Chirchir asante sana tuko na mheshimiwa Markomen Kichumba asante sana tuko na mheshimiwa Madam Malonza tuko na mheshimiwa Zak Njeru Tuko na mheshimiwa Florence Bore. Asante sana na tuko na Moses Kuria. Sijui kama kuna waziri yote ambaye nimewacha nje. Uh, pia kwa majina nitambue PSS kuna Raymond Mbolo ambaye ni waziri wa internal security. Kuna Patrick Mariru. Kuna Alfred Kombundo. Kuna Susan Mangeni. Kuna Betty Inyangala, Betty Inyangala. Kuna John Olotu, Ololuta. Na kuna Solicitor General Shadrack Mose. Asanteni sana. Your Excellency, I will not I think Duale has spoken very passionately and he has said it all what i can only emphasize ni kwamba sisi kwa serikali yako tulimheshimu sana generali ogola kama kuna kielelezo ya heshima na integrity kwa majeshi yetu basi ogola 
ndio alikuwa kwa mstari wa mbele yeye ametoa heshima sana kubwa kwa taifa letu na mimi ningependa kusisitiza kwamba kama waziri wa mambo ya kigeni pia nataka niwaambie kwamba ogola alikuwa na kipawa cha ujuzi wake kwa mambo ya kijeshi na pia akaka, akawa na kipawa sana kwa mambo ya kuhusu diplomasia na haya yote aliyatumia vizuri sana kuhudumia taifa letu na kupeana heshima kwa majeshi yetu and let it go on record that the accolades that we have received as they convey condolences from all over the world is testimony to the integrity and professionalism of our defense forces and we must acknowledge our defense forces have made us proud as a nation and as a region god bless you all may ugola's soul rest in eternal peace and may the family find grace in God's word. Your Excellency the Deputy President, wakati ni wako.